Okay, so let's continue on from part one, in which we learned that the Radfems have uncovered the evil MRA plan to replace women in the workforce with trans women. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Right, let's continue reading the post and see what insanity they have next. Joe and his co-workers are invited to the corporate event at a strip club. He perks up with excitement. It's been a long time since the company had this event. The last time it happened was before men took their rights back. Oh wow, you mean uh, in the future they've actually stopped mutilating newborn baby boys? That's, that's fucking amazing. Wow. Of course, uh, I don't think she actually means uh, that. I don't think she's actually aware of any actual men's rights. All she's aware of are bullshit straw men. Of course, because she's of the opinion that men already have more rights than women. And by advocating for men's rights, all we're trying to do is to uh, oppress women even more. Yeah... You can't really buy that level of ignorance, can you? Anyway, let's continue. They show up to the strip club, except there are no biological females, only trans women. Joe isn't into trans women, so he gets disgusted. Joe excuses himself from the occasion and a co-worker notes his bigotry and decides to tell on him. A couple of days later, Joe gets called into the boss's room. The secretary is a trans woman named Rebecca. Rebecca says, you in trouble now. Joe has no idea what is going on. Okay, so let, let me get this right. Uh, so we live in a patriarchy which is designed to benefit men and, and oppress women. And uh, what we're going to do with all this power that the men's have is uh, we're going to replace female strippers with trans strippers. Because apparently... If we were to objectify um, men who identify as women as opposed to objectifying women, it would somehow better oppress women. Yeah, I find that really confusing. It doesn't really make the least bit of sense. Now, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with uh, guys who happen to be into trans women. That's fine. That's That's their business. But I don't think the vast majority of men fall into that category or will somehow just change their minds and fall into that category it's just a very very strange argument to make but you know what i'm going to support this red femme in this particular case right i'm going to support her 100 percent and say yep let, let's have more female strippers let's let's support her and make and make uh female strippers mandatory there we go <laughs> <laughs> that's that stopped the oppression of uh of putting female strippers out of work right there let's let's get behind this guys and <laughs> fully fully support her <laughs> let's, let's continue in the boss's room the boss has a trans woman co-worker rubbing his shoulders since sexual harassment no longer matters there are many other services too the boss declares that because Joe is intolerant towards trans women's rights and is a bigot, he is now fired. Oh, so sexual harassment only counts when it's done to women as opposed to men or trans women. See, I never knew that. I, I thought all forms of sexual harassment was wrong. Silly me, you know. But that's the great thing about the internet. You learn something new from radical feminists every day. It fills in all those little knowledge gaps that... Uh, we inferior males just happen to have because of you know testosterone and toxic masculinity and and all those other uh, handicaps that we were born with. What would we do without the red femmes to educate us? Hmm. Anyway, let's continue. Joe packs up his belongings and gets in his car, crying his way home. Then he tells his wife what happened, and his wife wants to be supportive, but says, "Serves you right." If women were allowed to go to school and work like we used to, this wouldn't be happening. 
Joe gets angry and punches her in the face in front of the kids. Joan falls to the floor crying and Joe apologizes. Joan wishes she could run away but not even her parents will welcome her to. So the characterizations we see in this story um, unfortunately aren't only limited to radical feminism but make up a, a large part of mainstream feminists as well. It's the dynamic where all the bad stuff is done by men and only men. And if bad stuff happens to men, well, it's really their own fault, isn't it? You can't really blame anyone else. And women are constantly seen as the innocent victims who never, ever do anything wrong, but suffer at the hands of those evil men and masculinity. Of course, this in no way reflects reality in which uh, there are both good and bad men and there are both good and bad women. Instead, we have stereotypes based on gender, which is a, an odd way to run an equality movement, isn't it? To, to run it based on stereotypes. Uh, but anyway, let's continue. We've got a lot more insanity to get through, so uh, let's get stuck back into it. On the streets outside, there are protests with reporters. The protest is over how prices have not dropped even though the majority of families now have only one person working in a household. The companies all gawk and laugh at the protesters as riot police beat them and arrest them. Housing prices haven't decreased instead they have gone up. Food prices are rising and so are gas prices. A protester declares prices should drop to reflect the new times. A little six-year-old girl emerges and says or maybe you could allow girls to work again. The little girl is handcuffed for her words. Now, here once again we have a victim. And uh, once again the victim is female. And, you know, a six-year-old just to add that extra touch of sympathy. Now, it's, it's interesting because um, this brand of feminism always shows women has, as having no agency as having no power, as having no influence. They're not actors, they're something which is acted upon. Subjects act, while well, objects are acted upon. Months go by and Joe has a new job but they did have to sell their house because his new job doesn't pay as much and word got around that Joe is blacklisted for being a transphobe. He is now making much less so after selling the house, they decided due to upkeep they would have to buy a much smaller space. Joe turns on the TV to watch the news. On the news, another story of a female infant killed by her parents. It is now acceptable because it's a mercy kill. Well, you heard it here first, folks. That's right. A nice little piece of red femme wisdom. Apparently being accepting of trans women will lead to female genocide. Yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting little theory there, isn't it? I, I put it in the same category of theory as uh, the dinosaurs built the pyramids and um, Bigfoot assassinated JFK. All very, very logical and sound theories, no doubt. And uh, of course, once again, we have female victims. Females being acted upon with no agency or no power apart from their victimhood. Let's continue. This would be number 7005 this year. There are no court cases to determine guilt. The parents are just set free. There are also no female reporters, they have been replaced by trans women. Another news story broke out about a cis female having to potty in a public restroom at a rest stop only to find herself cornered and raped by a group of cross-dressers. The reporter declares all fault is on the cis woman for using the ladies' restroom when she should have went into the woods instead. And just when you thought it couldn't get any worse. <laughs> yeah, because remember folks, um, all men are rapists, uh, even trans women. Every single one, without a doubt. While Joe is working his new factory job making much less, he makes his way back home to his small house in the ghetto. He walks in on his wife homeschooling and teaching the girls about how females have also contributed to science, art, music, medicine. 
The little girl's eyes are brightly lit up with excitement. Then Joe notices his presence and cowers. Joe gets angry. Joe screams at Joan for giving the children false hope of a future of anything but being a subservient housewife. Joe is about to hit his wife but then he notices she is full of fear and he falls to the floor and hugs her. I'm sorry. Joe says. The next day, Joe notices all of the money from his bank account is gone while he's at work. He rushes home to find his biggest fears come true. His wife took off with his two daughters with a note left behind. Joan wrote about leaving to another country where men's rights do not trump females so their daughters can have a future. Oh, look at that. Joan finally got some agency and uh, took control of her life. Isn't that nice? And of course, poor old Joe. Well, he got what he deserved. Joe's heart drops. He falls to sleep and has a dream that his wife was in bed with him but when he wakes up she is gone. Joe decides he can't be a cis man anymore so he decides to transition to becoming a trans woman with a new identity so he can go back to his old job that paid much more. He apologized for his bigotry and claimed he was really just a closeted trans woman. Everyone applauded him for his bravery. Joe raises up enough money to track down his wife so he can find her again. He makes his way to her new location to find she has a new man. In shock he travels back to the land of men's rights and heads to the bar. He talks about his ordeal to the bartender. Joe says maybe. We were wrong about stripping women of their rights. If that didn't happen, my wife and kids would still be here. The bartender chuckled, oh Joe. That's silly. It's not our fault. If women wouldn't have demanded rights in the first place none of this would have happened. Joe stops to think about it and says yeah bro. You're right. Those damned women. The end. Well folks, I hope you've enjoyed this little trip into insanity. And uh, I think it's been very educational. I mean before reading this, uh, this piece... I had no idea that trans women were actually a plot by the Illuminati. Um, uh, actually, I mean the patriarchy. I, uh, I, I tend to get those two confused. Now, the really interesting thing about this uh, Red Femme conspiracy theory that MRAs are using trans women to replace women and force them out of the workforce and or whatever, is that there are also other feminists who claim that MRAs are transphobic, for example. We are here to expose the hateful lies told by MRAs under the mask of being human rights activists to promote misogynistic, homophobic transphobic, racist and bigoted rhetoric. And then there's this wonderful article on Gender Identity Watch called A Men's Rights Activist and Gender Identity Watch. So uh, the, the really funny thing about this is it lists Melody Hensley yes, fucking Melody Hensley as an MRA. Are you fucking serious? Melody fucking Hensley is now an MRA. Fucking hell. Uh, it's just... It's just unbelievable, isn't it? It's, uh, it's almost like feminists will accuse anyone who disagrees with their personal beliefs of being an MRA. What a strange, strange world we live in. <laughs> 